Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we continue a Physics for Teens course. We are talking about certain aspects of kinematics. And uh, today I would like to present graphical representation of uh, functions related to kinematics. Now, what functions? Well, position function, coordinate function, that's number one. Uh, the velocity function, number two, and acceleration. Now, these are all functions of time, right? So we have, for instance, three uh, position function. Then we have their derivatives, which are components of the velocity vector. So these are all vectors. These are three components of the vector of the position, which is vector from origin to the point where the object is located. Now, these are components of uh, every um, uh, speed in, in, in every coordinate, uh, which basically composed together becomes a vector called velocity. And the second derivative which is acceleration along each of the axes. Again, together it becomes a vector of acceleration. So we have three vectors. Each vector is a function of time. Now, I would like to graphically represent something. Well, let's first think about something like this. This is the function of one argument. t time is an argument. x is basically x-coordinate of the position in this particular case, that's the value of the function. Well, I can represent it in graphical mode t and the value of the function, right? So, starting from moment, let's say, 0, uh, at moment t is equal 1, I have this position, I have at t equals 2, I have this position, and that actually becomes a graph of the x-coordinate um, as it depends on the time. Okay, now that's just one function. I have three. <laughs> it's not easy to... well, if I had two, I can probably add another axis y and in the three-dimensional space, I can represent a two-dimensional function. Two-dimensional because it has two values. Now, to represent a three-dimensional uh, function, which is vector, uh, well, I need fourth-dimension space to represent it. I mean, it's kind of difficult. So, in all these graphical repre representation of uh, the motion, uh, its position, its velocity, and its acceleration. I will do much simpler. I will concentrate only on the movement within the x-axis. So we assume that out of this three-dimensional world where we live, we are talking about motion which is only occurring uh, which is only occurring within this uh, x-axis. Which means y of t and z of t are equal to zero uh, for all moments of t, and that's why their derivatives, the first and the second derivatives, are equal to... So, in the three-dimensional space, this is x, this is y, and this is z, motion occurs only here. It can be forward, it can be backward, it can be forward and backward, whatever it is. But motion is only here. Now, since I don't have these two other axes, I have only the x-axis, and now I can stretch it in time and show for each moment of time where exactly. So if my, for instance, if my object is moving from this point is equal to x, x is equal to zero, uh, all the way uh, uh, along the increasing uh, x. So that's how my object is moving. Now if I stretch it in time, 
I will have its position at any uh, moment of time. So at this position, uh, at this moment of time, I have this position. At this moment of time, I have this position. So I have something like a graph which represents my movement along the x axis uh, as the time goes by. All right, so I will concentrate only on the movement within the x-axis. Um, well, just because I can actually represent it graphically, I cannot represent how it moves in three-dimension, uh, in three-dimensional space as the time goes by. I can only watch it. I mean, if I can imagine my three-dimensional space and I have a, a point which represents an object, I can watch how it moves here and there, and, but I cannot graphically represent the same way as represent the graph of the function, right? All right, so we are concentrating only on movements within the uh, x-axis, within one direction, and uh, we choose the x-axis along this uh, straight line. And I will consider four different kinds of uh, movement. My first is uh, the body at rest. So, at all moments of time, the body does not move. It stands still at the position x is equal to 5, at all moments of time. So, what is the graphical representation of this type of, well, quote-unquote motion? It's not really motion because it's standing still, but it's still kind of a motion with a zero speed, etc. So, how can we do this? Very simply, if this is my time and this is my x-coordinate, now this is my 5, so at any moment of time my function is equal to 5, at this moment, at this moment, at this moment, which means my graph is horizontal line which is um, intersecting the x-axis at point x is equal to 5, and uh, in the future and in the past and at moment 0 it's always Equal, equals to 5. Now, on the same graph, I can actually represent how the speed actually looks like. Well, since the first derivative is equal to 0, because it's a constant, right? First derivative of the constant is 0. My graphic of the velocity is always here, 0. For all moments of time, my velocity is equal to zero. Now, velocity is a vector, as well as position is a vector. It's a vector from the... Uh, my position is the vector from the origin to the point where it is located. My velocity is, as you remember, it's... Uh, It's increment of the uh, position divided by increment of time. So it's like an average speed in the moment, uh, at, at the moment t, it's uh, average speed during the interval delta t when I take the limit of del as delta t goes to zero, which is actually a definition of the uh, derivative, right? So my vector of velocity is equal to zero in this particular case. Now, and so is my vector of acceleration. Obviously, because again it's derivative from the constant zero. This is the simplest kind of uh, graphical represent representation of the simplest kind of motion motion which is basically standing still relative to this coordinate system nothing's changed and since nothing's changed basically we have a constant uh, graph uh, for position for velocity and for acceleration okay next Now, let's consider that I was standing at point 5 
only at moment t is equal to zero in the very beginning and then I start moving proportionally to the time. As time is increasing, my position is also increasing. So, what is the movement if I'm watching my, my, my point, this is 5. At moment t is equal to 0, uh, my object is here. Now, what happens as the time t is increasing? Well, at moment t is equal to 1, it's, it, it, it's 8, uh, at moment t equals to 2, uh, it's 11, etc. So, the body, my object, my point is moving upwards. So, if I'm watching, that's where it's moving. Now, if I want to represent graphically each position as a function of time, obviously I have to have at 0 I have 5, at 1 I have uh, 8, at 2 I have uh, 11, so it goes, uh, it goes something like this. So that's my graph of the position expressed as this function. Oh, obviously it's a linear function, let's just look at this from the algebraic standpoint. It's just a plain linear function, obviously I have a straight line as a graph. So whenever I want to determine a position at any moment of time graphically, well, I have to uh, set the time, let's say the time is equal to uh, 3 for instance, then I go all the way up, take this point and take the coordinate, x coordinate, and I will see that at point 3 my position would be 14, right? So this is the graph of the position, this is x of t. Alright, now Let's talk about the velocity. Well, velocity is the first derivative, right? So, velocity is the first derivative. Velocity of... Um, um, uh, the first derivative of this function is 3, obviously, right? So, this is... This is 3. Um, this is my x... Uh, prime of t. This is my first derivative. Now speed is constant and equals to 3. Now why actually it's this way? Well just think about it. No matter what kind of two different points of time I choose, let's say I choose t1 and t2. My position at t1 would be this. My position at t2 would be this. And if I will subtract one from another, we are talking about movement along the straight line, right? So, if I want to know the distance between these two points, I have to just take the difference between them. And I have to divide by the difference in time. That's my average speed and the interval on the interval of time from T1 to T2, right? Well, and obviously this is uh, T2 minus T1 would... would, would uh, cancel out, 5 would cancel out, 3 would be outside, so it would be 3. So no matter what t1 and t2 uh, are, now average speed would be 3. And that's exactly what my um, first derivative shows. So at any moment of time, speed of movement along this straight line would always be equal to 3. How about acceleration? Well, acceleration is, as we know, the rate of change of the speed, right? Rate of change of velocity, to be more exact. But in this case, we are talking about straight line, so we have only one component, same, sp same thing, speed and velocity, almost the same thing, except direction, positive or negative. But in any case, so what's the acceleration? Well, again, rate of change of the velocity. Velocity is always constant, so the second derivative the derivative of the first derivative from the constant would be zero and obviously if it's a constant the rate of change of the constant is zero constant doesn't change so my second derivative acceleration is equal to zero so the graph of acceleration would be along this t line so I have position graph I have the velocity graph and I have acceleration graph so this is all about this particular uh, uniform 
uh, movement along the x-axis. Now, why is it uniform? Because my velocity is constant, so we are always covering the same distance uh, in, in the same amount of time, no matter where we are. From any t1 to t2, the speed would be constant, which is equal to 3. Okay, that's my second problem. Now the third problem would be just a bit more complicated. 3 minus t square over 2. Now it doesn't really matter how I got this formula. I got it from somewhere. Now in theory this formula <coughs> actually reflects the falling down um, object from a certain distance above the ground, let's say 3, and this is also not exactly correct, I, sh I should put some kind of a constant here. But I just simplified the whole thing. So this is the, this is the law of m motion. This is how our um, point is moving. Okay, so first of all let's just do this graph. <coughs> Now this is my tree, and at t is equal to zero, I am, well, let's use the physical concept, I'm at the height of tree, of something, meters, let's say, right? And then, as t is increasing, my height is decreasing, right? So somewhere, at t is equal to, uh, what? Uh, when this is equal to zero, so it's three six square root of six, right? Square root of six. My x would be equal to zero, right? Square root of six. Square would be six divided by two. It's three. Three minus three. Okay. So in between, my curve would be something like this. This is a parabola, right? Now, I didn't really put the whole parabola, but on the uh, time interval from 0 to square root of 6, it will look like this, okay, this parabola. Um, now, physically, my, m my body, if I'm watching this body, this is x-axis, and this is t, so I'm, if I'm watching from this point, it just goes down. And as it goes down, it goes down faster and faster because I'm losing the same. You see, during the first <coughs> during the first interval, I'm losing only this height. Then during the second interval, I'm losing greater height. And this is the height I have lost during the third interval. And this is and this is the height I, I lost during the fourth interval. So my Inter my, my, my height which I'm losing is increasing as t is increasing. Well, that's be because it's a parabola, right? Now, from here we can calculate my speed. Now, the derivative of this is, well, this is a constant, so it would be minus one half times two t, so it's minus t. Yeah, I specifically put uh, two in the denominator to have it uh, cancelled out the two from the derivative. So, this is my speed. Now, first of all, why is it negative? Well, obviously, because my uh, object is going down. Um, uh, it, it's uh, against the growing of the x. This is the direction where x is decreasing, and that's why my velocity is negative. So, that actually... <coughs> I'm sorry. That actually... Um, uh, goes well with the fact that this is not just a speed, so to speak, it's a velocity, it's a vector. This negative sign means that the vector goes down. Speed is still t, that's the absolute value of the vector, but the velocity is actually minus t because velocity is a vector, right? Now, my acceleration, minus 1, derivative from minus t is minus 1. So acceleration is constant. It's also negative because my movement is against the growing of the x component. 
so it goes against the uh, increase of the x that's why it's negative my velocity is negative my uh, acceleration is negative um, and uh, well basically what's important is it's constant it's a constant um, acceleration which means my rate of change of velocity is the same I'm losing more and more of a position but my velocity is uh, absolute value is increasing or since it's a vector it's decreasing but in absolute value it's increasing by exactly the same factor so that's what's important well because it's t square obviously second derivative of from from quadratic polynomial is obviously constant so in this particular case I just chose the polynomial with nice um, uh, values of the velocity and acceleration um, okay that's my number three program let's go to the set to the, uh, to the fourth one the last one now what we are doing here is Okay, now we are talking about the situation when my object, which is initially at this point, at the origin of coordinate, is going first up and then down, up and down, so it's oscillating between minus 1 and 1. So as the time goes by, starting from moment 0, I'm oscillating according to this function, sine of t. So as t is increasing, from 0, I will eventually reach point 1, when t is equal to pi over 2, right? Then I go down again, when t is equal to pi, sine of pi is equal to 0. Then, when t is equal to uh, 3 pi over 2, I go to minus 1. Then, at t is equal to 2 pi, I return to 0, and then the cycle repeats. So, how can I uh, uh, reflect it in, in the graph, how the graph would look in this particular case. So, if I look at the object, object moves like this. But if I would like to represent it graphically as a function of time, I have to stretch it. So, at 0, it's 0. At pi over 2, it's 1. At pi, it's 0 again. At 3 pi over 2, it's minus 1 and it's 2 pi it's 0 again so I have this 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 so my graph would be this 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 etc so this is my graph of the position x of t as the function of time. If I want to know where exactly my object at any moment of time, I put the time here, then I draw the perpendicular and find the place where my object is located. So this is the graphical representation of the position. Okay. What's the uh, velocity? Velocity would be cosine of t. <coughs> now, when I'm just starting the motion from zero, or I'm continuing the motion when I'm crossing the point 2 pi, I'm basically moving like a straight line here, right? My velocity is at t is equal to zero, cosine of zero is equal to one. Okay? Now, as I'm reaching the top, my velocity is uh, changing down and at the very top velocity is supposed to be equal to zero right because I'm changing direction I'm moving up 
basically I'm stopping at that particular moment of time and then m moving down. So my velocity is changing from being equal to 1 at this point to being equal to 0 at this point. So velocity would be like this, the cosine. That's my velocity. So again, at moment 0 or 2 pi or any other 2 pi multiples, I will have velocity at maximum, at, at 1. And then, as my position goes to its uh, uh, maximum, my velocity is going down to 0. And then my position going into opposite direction. So my velocity becomes negative and again it's increasing in speed. It's crossing uh, zero with maximum by absolute value but negative in this particular case because I'm moving down, right? And again it reaches the zero whenever I'm reaching, my position is reaching the minimum point, etc. And finally my acceleration minus sine of t that's the derivative of cosine is minus sine so how that would be arranged well graphically that's my if this is a sine then this would be minus sine right so acceleration would be basically zero at this particular point because my uh, speed is along the straight line it would be basically constant it doesn't m it, it does not uh, increasing or decreasing at this particular point now my speed is decreasing at this moment right which means my acceleration should be negative since my speed is decreasing my acceleration is negative and at this particular moment when my speed is actually hit zero because my position is equal to maximum acceleration should also be um, uh, negative uh, but, but maximum by absolute value in this case it's minus one that probably is not as obvious from the physical sense of this but mathematically it is obvious I mean you probably understand intuitively that acceleration should be greater whenever we are really changing direction from, uh, uh, from from moving up to moving down and the speed actually is reaching zero at that moment the change of speed actually is uh, uh, has the maximum value by absolute value so that's that's the graph all, all the three gra all the three graphs of uh, of the motion um, of the object which oscillates uh, al along this sinusoidal uh, law between minus one and, and, and one. So this is a, a graphical analysis of the movement when we stretch the movement along the along the timeline. Now as I was saying before it's kind of difficult to do it with two-dimensional uh, movement if you have x and y changing as functions of, uh, of time t beneath three-dimensional like surfaces would represent this particular movement and uh, in, a, in a general three-dimensional case we cannot really use any kind of a graphical representation because it needs fourth dimensional for the time right so we cannot imagine it graphically or draw so basically for the, for, for the movement within a straight line um, which we basically take as an x-axis it's possible, it's, uh, it, 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 it can look nicely, etc. Uh, and that's the only thing which probably is interesting because in most cases all these physical problems um, they are related to movements uh, along the straight line. At least these problems which we will consider in classical physics. Alright, um, well basically that's it for today. Um, I think I will um, introduce a few uh, problems uh, for the next lecture uh, and I will solve that th these problems and then I will probably put certain 
problems as examination material, which I do encourage you to take. Um, everything is on unisor.com, um, including um, solutions to problems, which I will represent in the, uh, in the next lecture. And exams will also be there. Your score will be registered if you are a registered student or it will not be registered, it will be just given to you if you are uh, anonymous. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.